All right. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about entrepreneurship. Also, what does it take to start from zero to multi-million dollar company? It's Mauricio Mejia live. Live, live, live. Entertainment guru, Silicon Valley entrepreneur, author, and speaker. It's Mauricio Mejia live. Live, 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 live. All right. Welcome to Mauricio Mejia Season number three, episode number nine. Wow, we've gotten this far, this far. Got to get, got to give a big shout out to the team for making this all a reality. Thank you to my team and and to everyone that's uh, been out there supporting Mauricio Mejia Live season three. Today, I have the honor and pleasure of introducing not only another entrepreneur, uh, another Latino entrepreneur, but a friend, someone that I've known now for. Wow, close to five, six, seven years now, yeah. and I have we have shared similarities in upbringing and what it takes to build a company from nothing to we'll we'll, we'll see how far deep we're going to get into this and <laughs> how high we've gone up that ladder. But it's my honor and my pleasure to introduce Ruben Resendez, CEO, entrepreneur. Add here and maybe other companies that I don't know. We haven't seen each other <laughs> for, uh, for some while. time. So I'm, I'm very I'm excited to look f- and looking forward to today's conversation. But Ruben, welcome. Thank you for making the time hey. and being here today. I Thank know you, you got a busy schedule. By, by the way, congratulations. Yeah. Thank You're, you. You got married this past year or yeah, uh, yep. 2023, correct? Maybe only about four months ago or wow. so, so far. And uh, yeah, there it's you been go. quite a journey. We've been all over the place. And I actually met my wife. Through you, oh a boy! Bit. Whoa! <laughs> it's no. Wild. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll take credit because you seem happy. But all right, this so, is going to be a happy story. <laughs> so we, we had met you. You owned a bar previously before. Okay, uh, San yep. Patricio's. San Patricio's, yes. And then we were invited to a holiday party. Man, you're there. taking you're Supposedly taking me, a holiday taking me party down there. a different road. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so yes. like that's how the connection goes into there. But I gotta say, like that was quite a while ago. That was yeah. over five years ago, six yeah. years ago. Like yeah. we said, we've known each other for a little bit over seven years from there yeah i just got to say that i am proud of you wow. i am proud oh, of man, the perseverance you. you have had throughout all the challenges and yes. i know many of the challenges that you've went through yeah and there's many more that have yeah. went you went through even since then crazy but you've con- t- continued to persist yes and you continue to do what you do like when i came in here i said my wife and i've been talking about doing a podcast for a long time yeah but a lot of people talk but there's very few people that do you yeah. actually do yeah. you said hey we're gonna start a podcast we're gonna start a podcast room over here in the office and get it all started and everything you actually did it yeah so i well, just gotta congratulate you we, That's, we did it and thank you yeah. Yes, it's they, it's it's a huge honor to yes. be on right now, and yes, I just got to say, like, it's amazing what you have done and what you've yeah. persevered through. And I just got to say, it's just the very beginning. Thank just you. Just the I, very beginning for you. I appreciate that, Ruben. I like I said, you're we're friends, mm-hmm. and 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 the fact that we're gonna be here and we're gonna have an open conversation like friends do, and at the same time share some some business uh, experiences, some battle wounds uh, of not only just in business but in life. And before we go any further, the only reason why this has happened today is because we built a team. Mm. I got to give a big shout out, Janine Escobar. She's my producer, but she's also the creator and the the visionary of what we have here today. So you can't do anything without a team. That's right. And you know that. And and, and that's going to be part of our conversation as we move forward that... We, we we have similar backgrounds, man. Mm-hmm. One, we're both male. Yeah. That, that's a good part, yeah, right? Last time I checked, right? <laughs> Number two, Latinos. I grew up in, in Southern California. You grew up here in Northern California. Mm. We've had we've had some uh, tough upbringings. Um, I know I grew up with a single mom. I don't know. I don't uh, quite remember how what your situation was if you had both parents or one parent, but I know it was rough. That's right. It was rough. And uh, and then we had another similarity where we went from being homeless and on mm-hmm. the street to knowing what it's like to go to bed hungry. Mm-hmm. Whew, and I get emotional mm-hmm. on that one. Um, and then what it's like to make the first million mm-hmm. and then get into the multi-millions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so let's dive right into it, man. Give yeah. us a little background. Give us some history. And and we got plenty of time here, man. This is our time together, and I want to enjoy it. And and again, I I want to share with the world that if you and I can do it, that's right. With I don't want to say any formal education or any formal training, other than our our perseverance and our resilience mm-hmm. and our heart 
to be successful, that if we can do it, everyone else out there can do it too. There's no Absolutely. excuses. And, any, and anyone that, that makes excuses is just because they haven't found their purpose yet. Yep. That's a hundred percent right there. That is a hundred percent. Interview's over hey, now. Right? That's it. We're done. We're done. Man, I, I could hop into so yeah. much of what you said right there, but I'll... pick 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 anywhere anywhere in in, in your timeline. I, I've always loved the fact that you can talk about where where you've been, like nothing, mm -hmm. not even break a tear. And I know that it's got to hurt inside. That that really is the truth right there because my whole entire mission is inspire others to elevate their lives. That's right. That's why I feel that I've been put onto this earth. Now I never I didn't know that all along throughout life. I always thought like all these things were happening to me. That oh I I was a single dad. I dropped out of college. Had a kid out of wedlock. Went on food stamps. Had to move back in with my parents in no. my parents' house in my early thirties. All of that stuff, I thought, like, man, why does this have to happen to me? Even growing up in high school, I was always thinking that, oh, all those successful people that I see out there, it's because they have a certain last name. Their last name is X, Y, and Z. But my last name is Resendez. Mm -hmm. my, nobody in my family has ever been an entrepreneur. Nobody in my family has ever been successful. Nobody in my family has ever graduated college or went to college. Mm. Nobody, nobody in my family has ever done that. So I never grew up seeing that. So I always thought in high school that... Whatever my parents did and whatever I saw them do, that was my path. I thought success is all genetics. It's all because of family Oof. lines. It's all because wow. of how they grew up and they grew up in it. So they were, it was given to them. And that's really how I thought. And there's probably kids out there right now yeah. and even adults that Absolutely. still think that. Absolutely. And I want them to look at me and say, if this idiot can do something with his life, then I think I can do something with my life. So yeah. that's my whole entire mission. And, you know, it took a long time for me to really embrace that, to say, mm -hmm. like, you know, I was really embarrassed that I was a single dad, that I had a kid out of wedlock because, you know, I grew up in a family where we went to church every Sunday and mm. my dad was in church all the time. And I, I guess to go into my upbringing, yeah. that in growing up, I really didn't see my mom very much because my mom worked graveyard just so she could make an extra $2 an hour. So she would be sleeping during the day and then at nighttime, she would go to work. And then my dad would work throughout the whole entire day. So I would be at my grandma's house majority of the time. And then my dad would come and pick me up a little bit later. We lived on a lot of frozen foods. Oh, Alita uh, <laughs> raised you, though, too, right? You gotta she give, absolutely did. You got to give credit to grandma. So, and, yeah. and my grandpa, too. Oh, nice. What I learned from my grandpa is he worked three jobs while raising eight kids. Wow. And in being able to do that, I learned work ethic. I learned yes. he did it in Amen. a blue-collar yes. way. And yes. I said, you know what? If he could do it in a blue-collar way, I think I could do it in a white-collar way. So literally on my desk in front of my laptop, I have a picture of him and I where we went fishing one day and I had caught a catfish in Lake Cunningham over on the east side of San yeah. Jose because that's where I grew up, <laughs> on the east side of San right. Jose, which most people would say is like the wrong side of the tracks. But Depends who says it, right? Yeah. <laughs> it depends on All who right. says it yeah. at that point. But I didn't know it was the wrong side of the tracks at that time. And even going to high school, I thought it was normal to have a daycare center on campus because I went to a high school named Mount Pleasant. They mm. called it Mount Pregnant oh at the time. God. I've heard that a couple of times. That's <laughs> and, uh, interesting. Okay, so yeah. But they called it Mount Pregnant because all the kids were having kids. Wow. And they had a daycare center on campus for the kids that were having kids. And I thought that was normal until I grew up and I graduated high school and I was asking some friends that I made outside of high school, oh, yeah, so how, how was your daycare center? And they said, daycare center in high school? <laughs> daycare center and they the looked teachers. at me like weird yeah and i said yeah you guys don't have a daycare center on in your high school you didn't have a daycare center no why would we need a daycare center wow so in reality i was starting to go down the path of being a statistic and i went to De Anza college for like four years transferred to san jose state eventually after doing a lot of drugs dropping all my classes and everything too and then i got introduced to a financial services firm yeah. that introduced me to the world of personal development wow and the world of wow. personal development introduced me to books like think and grow rich how to win friends and influence mm. people and then i started reading autobiographies of people who have grew up with even less than i grew up with yes. that have made huge successes that you hear about today and I said, man, if they can do it, then I can do it too. So then that started inspiring me in such a way that that's what started my entrepreneur journey. But before that, yeah. I didn't even know what the word even entrepreneur even meant. What? How old were you when, when your entrepreneurial spirit was woken up? It was about 22 years old. So I, I remember when, when my spirit was woken up and I was 15 years old. Mm -hmm. and, and I've shared this with in the past is that growing up poor or having not 
not being as whatever label they want to put it right. I didn't have the the cool shoes or the cool clothes, and I be and I think that that's what triggered me was seeing the pain of my mom. Mm. She had to work long hours to provide a roof and food over our our, our uh, food on the table and a roof over our head. And one day I just, I decided that I needed to take action, right? And it goes back to my roots, right? I made a decision at a mm-hmm. young age. I committed to that decision. Now, I didn't know what, I was going to eventually develop something out of that, but I made a decision, I committed to my decision, and then I executed on the decision. And I decided that I needed to take uh, some action in my life mm-hmm. because I, I, and as a kid, I was just like, no way, I'm, I, this is, there's got to be more in life. There's got to be more in life. This cannot be it, especially if I'm seeing other kids and other families have it, right? Like you're looking at it through your lenses and you're saying like you thought it was genetics or you thought it was surnames. You thought it was, you know, we were finding all these bullshit reasons of why it's not us mm-hmm. until something clicks. We we waken up and then we take action. That's right. And, and for me, yeah, man, it, it's again, we run parallels. I mean, my my we were on welfare. Mm hmm. We we depended on on the free free whatever we got right because in order to survive, but I think that the the all of that was just helping brew the inside the spirit that the the the, the it just the inner just whatever fire it was it was just fueling that fire to eventually where I had someone that said to me, son, you got an entrepreneurial spirit. And I was like, I'm 15 years old. I'm like, what's an entrepreneurial spirit? So just continue doing what you're doing, mm. and and you will be a very successful you will be a successful person in the and when you when you grow up. Okay, sir, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And then entrepreneurial just bling just clicked on. Mm-hmm. And then as I started learning, I started hearing right because you start paying attention, you start honing into certain words and entrepreneur, entrepreneur, business <laughs> owner, blah blah blah. And I'm like, oh, that's what a oh. You mean the guy that doesn't have a boss? Oh, he's the boss, the <laughs> entrepreneur. I wanted to be the boss. I wanted to be the boss. So it, it, that's huge, right there. Because yeah. everybody's got a switch of when it turned on. Yeah. And that was my switch right there, there is go. when I got introduced to the word and what it really meant to be an entrepreneur. And I think we get glimpses of our future here and there. Mm. We get little glimpses mm. here and there of what like our future that. looks like. And there's Ooh. a reason for that. But you got to know <laughs> that deep. it's a reason. That's deep. You got to know. <laughs> <laughs> That's deep. Because I know exactly what you're talking about. The, yeah. the sad part is that a majority of people get those glimpses too, but they don't do anything about it. Like you said, decide, commit, and execute. Yeah. They don't do anything about it and they don't seek it out. And they start getting letting the doubts and the fears creep into their mind. And sure, even you have doubts and fears Absolutely. and, and Absolutely. a lot of different things that go in. But you got to be mentally tough and knowing that's to right. say, hey, you got to shut up. Yeah. And you got to tell yourself, like, shut up. That's not me. Right. I am a positive person. That's I right. know who I am. Oof. I am doing great things. And I know exactly where I'm We're going. We're on the Ruben Resendez podcast right now, man. <laughs> this, is, this, this is good stuff. I love it. No, because you're hitting it right on the money. Mm-hmm. I, I I mean, it, even to today, I'm I'm surrounded by great people. Ruben, I mean, mm-hmm. I got people like Tony, yeah. Mark, Gary, Jeff. I mean, these guys are they're they're changing the cityscape. That's the, right the, of, of Silicon Valley. I got these people that are just I mean, just pouring into me. Mm-hmm. I'm blessed. The people that I was around five years ago, they're not they're nowhere to be found because right. as we scale. So does our our surroundings, right? We That's be, right. we become who we surround ourselves with. I man, over the past <laughs> like man. few years, I've been noticing that so much more yeah. and so much prevalent. Where it's like previously before, I used to seek out those that were just great at business. Yes, and they were great at business, doing amazing revenues and everything. The revenues that I wanted to to make, but then I would find out that their family life is in shambles. Oof. I find out that they're not great with their kids. That's right. And I started looking they at that vices. a little bit more. They got vices. They got vices. Yes. And behind closed doors, they still yeah. have so many challenges and dealing with so many demons inside Oof. too. And of course, all of us do and deal with that, but all of us deal with it in a different way. So I started seeking out mentors that are not great, not just great at business, Mm -hmm. but then great in their family life, great with their kids. I want to be a great dad to my kids. I want to be the most amazing dad to my kids. I want to be a great husband to my wife. So I seek out mentors that are great husbands that have great long lasting marriages to you because that's the marriage that I want. I want to be able to do it all because the person that doesn't have that. 
that's the person that's going to say it's not possible. No, you either have one or the other. Of course, yeah. it's going to be out of balance. Like, no, yes. you either have a strong marriage or a strong business. Like, no, yeah. I know friends and they have it all. Yes. I can have it all too. Interesting you say that. We're going to go down that path really quick because I respect and I have admiration for couples, mm-hmm. strong couples. They can have the conversations. They can have the relationship. And they have that unity, right? That, and I've seen that. We've, we have, again, we have mutual friends that are in types of, those types of relationships. For me, I, I don't want to say that I've gotten comfortable because I've been single for a very long time. Like, mm-hmm. ofi- like it's official single. My background also being in the entertainment industry for so many years, I just, it just was not my thing. But there's moments where you try to find that balance. And uh, there's moments where you're laying in bed and you're by yourself and you're like, damn. <laughs> It would be nice, right? And then I'm like, and then I start thinking of the negatives. I'm like, oh, yep. hell no. I'm going to hug yep. my pillow right All now. All the risk involved. I'm, I'm going like, to yeah. yeah. worry about somebody else. Yeah, I'm going to fall asleep. And then when I wake up in, in, in a couple of hours, it's gone, that, that, that fantasy. But I, I, I love what you just shared because you're right. You got to seek it. And then when you seek it, you will find it, right? That's right. And I've always been great at business and just horrible on the personal side of my of my life because man i'm not getting any younger Mm -hmm. even though i have three beautiful children Mm -hmm. i have three beautiful sons my oldest being 19 and my youngest being seven it's refreshing because sometimes it just says okay maybe i need to turn on that radar that little switch in me right just like the entrepreneurial spirit turned on maybe i need to turn that thing on Mm -hmm. and then need to start sending it out manifesting to the universe that hey the right person will come that's right because i'm open and ready for it Yeah, a hundred percent. And it's all about what we tell ourselves on what's good and what's not good for us. Where if we're telling ourselves more that, hey, being with somebody is a lot worse and it's a lot more work than it is with being with somebody, then we start surrounding ourselves with all the other people of like couples and happy couples with happy marriages. Yeah, I got too many many happy couples around me. I'm like, fuck, I I walk in and everybody starts asking me all the crazy. So they're living vicariously through me and I'm like... Well, because I don't want to know their stuff, right? I'm like, well, I'm like, you don't look too happy, or like, or I hear this the the horror stories, right? And yep. you're like, that's where you're like, where's the balance? That's right. You have you have X, you have so much of one, but the other side is not balanced. Yep. And then you start thinking that's the way that, that the world and works, exactly and that's the way that marriage works, that's that, the way that couples work. But then you start seeking out other couples that are like happily married, and they got great businesses and are thriving, and they've been married for over 30 years, and they're still keeping it spicy and everything, and you're around <laughs> yeah. them all the time, and you're like, that's the vision that I want. Because growing up, I didn't see that vision. I mean, yeah. the vision, even my aunts and uncles even today are like, oh, the old ball and chain. They're like, <laughs> man, you make marriage seem and being a couple seem like it's boring and yeah. like it's a duty and work. But then we start getting around couples where they're so excited. They can't keep their hands off each other. They're in their 50s and they've been married for over 30 years and yeah. everything. Or like, man, and they're just like love hanging out with each other all the yeah. time. So we're it's hanging like, out with more couples. Already, guys. Yeah. Come on, yeah. come on, get a room. <laughs> and I love that. I was like, that's how I want my marriage to be 30 nice. years from now. That's how I want to be as a couple. And the more that we surround ourselves with that, because just like how you said, before meeting my wife, I was just working seven days a week, yeah. nonstop, yeah. nonstop, seven days and, a week. You couldn't pull me out of it. And, and, and you, built an, you built an empire. Absolutely. Yeah. I've seen company um, here. Uh, is give us give us a little background on that. And five years ago, with the last conversation, man, you were hitting some big numbers, man. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure you're still hitting some big numbers. And that thing has only grown. Yep. Share with us what was the inspiration of of building that company. And aside, the entrepreneurial spirit was already woken. But what what triggered you to go there? That's right. We go back to mental toughness, and I got to give a uh, mental toughness credit uh, th- that term. Mental toughness. I got to give it to Eric Olson. Yeah. Again, I, and I, eventually I'm going to have him here on the show because I want to share his story. Uh, good friend of ours, and and he taught us. He shared and taught mental toughness. That's right. He's he's the one that introduced me to entrepreneurship. Yeah. I've known him for over 30 years. We've grown up together before we were teenagers and everything too. And 
he introduced me to entrepreneurship because he introduced me to the financial services firm. Yeah. And I did that all the way to 2008, living on 100% commission. And then you know what happened in 2008. Yeah. That's when the financial crash all happened. Yeah. So the world turned upside down. Completely upside yeah. down. So all of my clients all dried up at about $300 to my name. And then the girl I was going out with for about three months tells me that she's pregnant with my son. Mm. It's like, oh, great. Yeah, and we tried to make it work for yeah. a few years, and it just wasn't working because I still had that ambition. After I found out I was going to be a dad, I said, "Man, I got to go and do something. I got to go and get one of those jobs, mm -hmm. adjust over broke." Oh my god! That everybody my, said my not stomach, to get. My stomach hurts when you when right. you say that word. Ah. So only <laughs> oh, only you and I will probably understand that, and entrepreneurs <laughs> will understand. Like when you take that dive and go get a job, that's like the worst. That's, you feel like that's the thing that you didn't failure. want to do, and that's failure. failure and, and, and there's no learning from that failure that's mm -mm. just failure that's that's saying you know what fuck i'm done i'm giving up that's it yep and 100 and, and 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 there is people that go and do that i've met plenty of ex-business owners mm -hmm. ex-entrepreneurs yeah <laughs> right yep. they're ex and and then they say oh i'm happier just <laughs> having a job and and then then running a business and dealing with all the problems and I'm like well you just weren't cut out for it that's because it. Yeah, and, and and especially if it's not itching at them still because right. even when I went and got that job like you said like no. I felt so ashamed I mean I even stopped talking to our buddy Eric Olson because yeah. I was ashamed to even answer his calls because I got that job yeah so I was like I don't even want to answer I, I'm so ashamed and so embarrassed but I've got to do this because I got a kid on the way and I'm trying to do this thing with his mom and everything too and. But that entrepreneurship spirit never left me whatsoever. Yeah. And that's what caused a lot of friction because I wanted more and that's I wanted right. to go get more too. That's and she's right. like, ah, you're okay. Now, Oof. I mean, that job was only making 30 grand a year. And then eventually I became good at doing it. It was an internet marketing that's company right. doing lead generation. That's I right. knew nothing about it that's whatsoever. That's what planted the seed. And it planted the seed that's right. and going that direction, which was wild of how it worked out. But it never left me of being an entrepreneur. I was like, how does this business owner do it that's running this internet marketing company? And we saw all these affiliates that I was managing were sending them quarter million dollar checks every month. And there's thousands of them. I was like, I don't know what the heck this is, but I need to know that everything there is to know about it. So I just became obsessed about that industry yeah. to know everything there was about it. But that entrepreneurship or like wanting more just overcame so much. It didn't work out with my son's mom, but I always use her as an excuse to say, you know what? She's the reason why I can't start a business and go and do something. Now I'm doing this internet marketing thing. I want to do this internet marketing thing and start a business, but she's the reason why not. So I use her as an excuse. So yeah. once that didn't work out, I was like, okay, there's no more excuses there's no, what's, anymore. What's the excuse now, right? Yeah, I've you're got free. To do it. You're I've got free to do to go. it. Yeah. So then since that day forward, I started working uh, until 2 a.m. in the morning. I'll get off of work and then I'll come back home, six o'clock, pick up my son. And then he would go to sleep at 9 p.m. And then from 9 p.m. until 2 a.m. for three years straight, I would just continue to work on it, sleep maybe four hours a day yeah. for three years straight and then go to the gym in the morning and try to still get the fitness in and everything, too. So eventually they fired me and said, like, this guy is, really isn't focused anymore. Right. It's like, Shoot. Well, you're focused on building your own company now. I was you, trying. Yeah. But I, and, and I was trying to build it, trying to figure out how do you form an LLC? How do you form a corporation and all of this? How do you build a website? Teaching myself how to build a website, teaching myself how to build logos and designs and yeah. all this different stuff. But it wasn't making very much money yet. Yeah. Yet. So once I got fired, <laughs> then I said, all right, I got to go all in on this. And yeah. I was in my early 30s at that time. And that's when I started to add here and said, all right, this is it. That's if when it's you jumped, happen, jumped off the cliff. And I, it, God works in mysterious ways because I needed that. I yeah. needed the rug to be pulled from me. I needed to get fired because if I didn't, then I would have still hang, hung on to that comfort where eventually there I was making six figures and I was like living an okay, comfy, I could pay bills now and such too. But then once that rug got pulled out from under me, I said, all right, I got to let my house go. Talk to my parents and say, hey, I know my, my early 30s and I got my kid too. Is it okay if we move in with you? I'm trying to build this business. And it'll only be maybe a year or so that I'll be moved in. And I saw I moved back in to my parents' house in my early 30s, 30s on the east side of San kid. Jose with the kid yeah, in my old bedroom with my yeah. old bedroom posters still on the wall and everything too. <laughs> and I was just inside the room just working seven days a week. And then I would hang out with my son. We didn't have any money. So we would come take the bus downtown and do stuff around. We'd do various different things just yeah. so to make sure that... I always spent time with them and did that time still and tried to 
still run the business at the same time, but still was sleeping maybe like five hours a night yeah. during that time and just kept on doing it. But I loved it. My yeah. parents didn't know what the heck was going on in that room. I think my mom thought I was like some broke, unemployed kid because one day she came in and she goes, hey, you know what? I could get you a job over at my my work. And if you give me your resume, I was like, I told you I'm building the business. And yeah. I'm trying to build the business. Like, right. why would I want to go and get a job from there? Yeah. So there's a lot of people don't understand, especially if you're the first one in your family to That's be right. an entrepreneur. That's and right. And me, I'm a first one, first generation entrepreneur. Yep, me Nobody too. in my family's ever started businesses before. No. So they don't understand. Even to this day, they don't really understand what goes on. They just know, like, they come over to a big house and they yeah. have a barbecue. and they, like, they, they see all the fruits of the labor, right? That's right. They don't understand the what it takes the the pain the struggles mm -hmm. real real everyone always sees the highlights right? That's right they see the fancy cars they see the big house they see all the they see all again all the glitz and glamour but and it also depends on on what you want to show i mean there's there's people that i know that have mm -hmm. hundreds of millions of dollars and they're they're very You'd be like, man, did you live in this? Especially I mean, here in Silicon Valley. Oh yeah, you, especially you, here in you, Silicon you drive, Valley. What? I mean, it's like, and yet they're they own hundreds of millions of dollars and billions of companies. I mean, it's just it's it's crazy. I mean, I, you know, we're we're very blessed uh, to be where we're at. We've been blessed by having the people that have come into our lives mm -hmm. and have poured into us and have awakened our spirits to to do the the things that we're at. I mean, again. Uh, 2008 was a very pivotal point in me. I was in the peak of my nightlife career. I mean, I had the baddest nightclub in San, in, in San Jose and Silicon Valley. I mean, it was the the glitz, the glamour, the toys. I mean, I was I was living life. There was there was nothing that that there was nothing could hold me back. Nothing could stop me. Mm -hmm. What I didn't have was the discipline and the knowledge of what happens when the rug gets pulled out of you. I got rid of everything. Everything that was material didn't matter to me, right? Release it all. Just oof, just like, just take it off, right? I didn't want to carry that shit with me anymore because now what I had to do is I had to prepare myself and I had to pack light for battle. That's right. Because now, yep. now I'm in the survival. Now I'm in the wilderness, right? It, they always say it's easy to get in the jungle. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get out. Yes. Right? Because you gotta you gotta you gotta figure out you gotta survive. So for me it was it was then survival mode and and then trying to figure out, fuck, what do I do next? Mm -hmm. Nobody knows, right? Nobody has to know what that everyone thought Mauricio, oh man, partly of why I wrote Smoke and Mirrors was because everyone had this illusion that Mauricio the Great, fuck and my guys in LA, like I when I, lost, when I lost my company, that was the first time that I had any regret that I didn't finish college. I dropped hmm. out on the fourth year at San Jose State, my year to graduate, and I dropped out just because I was like, I made a decision. Mm -hmm. I committed to my decision, and I executed it, and I said, I'm done. I'm done. And I want to go be, I want to go build my, my, my career and my life. I knew I wanted to be a, a nightclub operator, owner, a concert promoter. I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I already had that spirit in me. But I knew that that's what I wanted and that no school, no paper was going to give me that. Mm -hmm. And I took it. I jumped off the cliff. I said, I'm going. I'm all in. Boom. And I remember that in 2008 and when the world turned upside down, I was like, oh, shit. I got to get one. I got to get one of those things. Right? <laughs> I'm like, I can't even say it. I got to get one of those things. Right. And and I remember I said, okay, well, let me try to get one of those things. And I, I came in. I had experience. The, the opportunity that they were given, quali I qualified beyond. And because I didn't have that paper, that certificate, I got, hey, man, you need, you need to have a bachelor's. Mm -hmm. And I was like, but, dude, I'm, I'm, look, at, look at my history. Yeah, man, it's not going to happen. That was probably one of the most, that was the best thing that happened to me because it reminded me again. Mm -hmm. who Mauricio Mejia was. Mm -hmm. And 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 that was what, that that just reawoke that beast in me. I'm never going to go down that road. And in my life, I've only had two jobs in my life. And both, each job lasted 30 days apiece. I, on one of them, I didn't even pick up the check. I didn't even care. I just like, it's small money. I, not that I don't, I don't disrespect any money, but it just, in my mindset at the time, it's like, no. And I remember that that when that happened, it just all it did was just reawaken that giant, that 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 young Mauricio growing up in the streets mm -hmm. and saying, "Nah, man, 
you got you got some big you got a bigger purpose. That's right. And and I remember I I sat down in a 10 by 10 room. I I ended up moving back to my sister's house in LA. <laughs> my sister, I'm going to my younger sister and I'm saying, "Hey sis, can you let me stay at your house while I figure shit out?" She's like, "Yeah, you can take one of the rooms, blah blah blah." She lived in a 5 bedroom beautiful home just well and I remember I went back to basics. I, I put a whiteboard up on my on my on my wall, and I wrote my plan. Mm-hmm. And the rest is history. How you just explained that right now? You're so clear that I think everybody needs an enemy in their life. Yeah, that's one of their one of your enemies. Where like you look back at that and yeah. the way that you explain that too of like the enemy is the person who thinks that you have to have a degree and you have to have this piece of paper. Like you're still to this day proving yeah. them wrong to say like, I don't have that paper, yeah. but I'm going to outrun you. I'm going to outwork you. Yeah. I'm going to make sure I build a bigger company than anybody else with that piece yeah. of paper. And that was part of my journey too, is like what really sparked it when I was a little getting a little comfortable at that J-O-B yeah. was when I knew I made up 60% of that company's profits. And I knew that I made up 60% of that company's profits. And then when it came time for a promotion, all these other guys from Stanford and Syracuse were all getting promotions. They didn't make up 60% of that company's profits, right. but I did. Right. But I, did, I got passed up for that promotion. So I said, you know what? That was a good wake-up call to say, yeah. if I'm going to do what I want to do and be at the top, I got to go and take it. Nobody's going to give it to me. I've got to go and take it. And now I feel like, you know what? I didn't go and graduate college for a reason. So that way, I ever someone can look at me and have no excuse to say, that guy didn't graduate college. He dropped out of college. Like he was a single dad and they could even be inspired to say, if this freaking guy can do it, then <laughs> why not me? Yeah. Why exactly. not me? And, that, and, and that's the same thing. So I've used that as my rocket fuel, right? Mm-hmm. It's like growing up in the streets. I have all the different struggles. And, and what I don't do is I don't live in that. That's right. Uh, I, don't, I don't allow it to victimize my mindset. What I allow it to do is to fuel my mm-hmm. mindset and to give me that energy that I need in order to keep catapulting forward. And, yes. and it's not over. And it's and the times that I have caught myself slipping, like where I've gotten comfortable, mm-hmm. that's when I make the mistakes, right? Because I'm not on, I don't have my edge. I don't have the the reminders. And then that's when I need to, when, when the coaching or the mentoring really need, I mean, it's like you're starting from scratch, right? When you, like, again, five months ago, my body didn't look this way. I mean, yeah. I was, I, I, and, and, I own, and I own my own gym, right? <laughs> <laughs> that what 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 a what a travesty that is that I'm I'm a little fat boy walking around doesn't help that I'm short and then I'm like walking around thinking that I'm looking cool until somebody shows me a picture of what mm. you look like and I was like I, I was like damn that's me mm-hmm. I look so old I looked fucking uh, swollen I just my mind I can tell that my mind was just not in the right place mm-hmm. yeah. not in the right place so once I checked myself and I got checked. And I have continuous. I get checked. It allows me to hold myself accountable, knowing that as I'm as I'm doing this, it's only making me better. On top of that, is being around the people that I, even the people that I'm around now. They're they've noticed, and they and I can see that that's motivated them now mm-hmm. to start taking care of themselves a little bit more too, mm-hmm. and 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 so forth. So it becomes contagious, right? Again, we become who we surround ourselves with. That's right. One of the things that, again, I've, I've, I've always admired to your, your willingness and openness to, to share the story, your life. And then at the same time, one of the things that I really, I've, I've noticed and I've seen is when you're with your son, you and your son have such an amazing relationship. That kid is, he's, he's, he's such a beautiful human being. Mm -hmm. And how do you, how does he deal? How do you deal with making sure that he understands that, He's, he has to have the work ethic, too, mm-hmm. that it's not just going to be given down to him because that can also become, it's a blessing and a curse. Yep. So have you seen that you've had to do some balancing on that as well? Because even though you don't want anyone to grow up the way that we have, mm-hmm. how do you manage that? To be honest with you, somebody had asked me a question of like, what's some of the fears? Like, it seems like you're so confident and you're so sure of yourself, but I'm sure you have some kind of fear. And I said, you know what, if I were to name one fear, it's the fear that I might be giving my kids too much Mm. and I might be giving my son a little bit too much because we all want to give our inner child everything that our inner child didn't have. 
Mm. So yes. that's why we've worked and that's why I've worked so hard. I Everything in my life, including you being here right now yeah. in front of me is because my son was born yeah. because it moved me in that direction. When I look back, I'm like, thank goodness I met that woman that I only knew for three months and she gave birth to my kid because it pointed me in a direction of an internet marketing company and then me starting an internet marketing company and then growing an internet marketing company that has changed so many thousands and millions of lives in yeah. doing it yeah. all because of that one decision that I thought, man, why is this happening to me? But it was actually happening for me. So when I look at my son, it's almost as if like God has been speaking to me through him to say, you're on the right path. And in those points when I was living with my parents and I was there at rock bottom, even went on food stamps because my parents don't have a whole bunch of money either. So they weren't able to provide me with a whole bunch of money. So I right. went on food stamps while I was there and to get benefits for my son so he could still have health care. So I went and uh, got food stamps in that way. But when I was at rock bottom there, I always looked at him to say, man, this kid was born for a reason to point yeah. me in this direction. Yeah. At those times when I wanted to give up and I said, man, it was so challenging. I looked at him and I said, this kid was born for a reason to point me in this direction. So now that... We're no longer on food stamps. We no longer live with yeah. my parents. I mean, we lived in the high rise together previously before yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then I moved over to the penthouse yeah. uh, across the way in I downtown yeah. too. And beautiful now, view, by the way. I love that place. That was beautiful. It was hard to give up. Yeah. But you gotta give up good to go to great too. Ooh. And I gotta thank my wife because she I was like, Man, this has been a dream of mine. Yeah. yeah no. When I was living with my parents, broke and on food stamps, I'd wake up every single morning, I would say, I live in a downtown high rise overlooking the entire city. And every single night before I go to sleep, I would say it out loud and I would write mm. it down for about I three years yes. straight. I would say, I live in a downtown high rise overlooking the entire city for three years straight, every single morning and every single night until it became true. And I put Zillow alerts on the downtown high rise that you live in. Mm -hmm. And I said, I have glass windows. I wouldn't even talk to a real estate agent to have them walk me through, even when I was broken on food stands, yeah. but I was acting like, you have oh, to, I'm going to buy this. You got to visualize it. You got to visualize it. Yeah. yeah. And I yeah. saw it until eventually it became a reality. And the business started making enough money where I could live on that down in that downtown high rise overlooking the entire city with the glass windows and everything. That's and right. then we upgraded to the the penthouse too, as well with a huge balcony and everything. And I thought, man, this is my dream That's come a true. That was a party house, a party place, man. It was, was amazing. Like, yeah, and we got the fire pit and everything too <laughs> that was out there. Yeah, you, you were really seeing Silicon Valley from there, man. It was beautiful. I and we saw it. all the private jets would fly yep. in all the yep. time too. Yep. I have the cigar there on the patio. Yep. I was like, man, this is made. Yep. And right. then my wife comes in and she goes, I think it's time that we go and get a. A real house now. Yeah. Like, what do you mean? This was my dream. Yeah. This was my dream. She's like, you always talk about going from good to great. Woo. It's time to start going to great. <laughs> so we need to start looking for, good for a house. her, man. Good for her. I owe so much to her. She yeah. has dragged me out of so many different ways of me just being uh, comfortable with where we're at. She's always got a next level in her mind. Just when I think like, man, I gave her the absolute ultimate gift you could possibly yeah. think of. She always tells me, oh, there's a, another level yeah. too. And there's always another level. And I'm so grateful for her because she stretches my mind and to Good. go into the different level from it too. So we moved into the country club and like on the golf course and all that good stuff too. Huge house and everything. But yes. that was all because of her dragging us from there to there. So it's interesting. It's like now being a different environment. When I come back to downtown where I used to live, I'm wow. like, shoot, I can't believe that we used to live like this. Like right. there's homeless people here and it's a little bit crazy and a little bit loud and and, and everything because I'm used to at the country club. It's peace and quiet no, and man. you hear just birds See, that, chirping that, that, in the that, green that's, that's mountains. That's what I, I don't want. I like, I like that controlled <laughs> chaos, man. I, I, I love hearing the... Ah, ah, and yeah. I, I love hearing the crazy guy that like, hey, the, what the, the like, fire truck at 2 a.m. in the morning, the, 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 the trash. Ca I love the when the <laughs> trash guy comes in at like five o'clock in the morning and I hear Vroom, I'm like, really, these guys got to be doing. But, you know, I'm so high enough that I, I can barely but I can still. But interestingly, that when you say that, I, 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 I know that feeling because I know what it was like not too long ago. Mm -hmm. Right. Even though it feels seven years, eight years ago or, or even with with pre-COVID, right, when or during COVID, to think that I'm I'm in a beautiful place. This is uncertain now because I'm not enjoying it because right now we're we don't know the uncertainties eating us up. And I'm like, is this gonna last mm. forever? Am I gonna go back to where I came from? And that that enemy right there, mm -hmm. whoo, it's mm -hmm. like the fire that just says, No, you're yeah. not. 
Yep. Right now, currently, I'm, 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 there's some, some in, in the business, in all the different multiple businesses that I have right now, there's a few of them that are doing very well, and they're, they're, they're my long game ones. Um, and then there's the ones that, you know, you have to manage and tweak and do this. And if you don't, they can, they can, they can spiral. And those mm-hmm. are the ones that, that can take you out. There's moments where I'm just like, oh, hell no, 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 mm-hmm. no, 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 no. I'm going to grab you by the horns and I'm going to start, I'm going to drive you. You're not going to drive me. So I've, my relationship with business, impeccable. That's right. My relationship in my personal life, I need to work on that. And that's where I hope that, again, of having these types of conversations and, and being able to now see and call it out and want it, that that eventually will come to me because Absolutely. I, I feel that with the powerful, a powerful teammate mm-hmm. or a person that, that has vision and shares values and, and does that, I think that, man, there, there, there is no limit. No limit whatsoever. There's no limit. There's no, no limit. A hundred percent. And exactly what you said, too, is like there's always that fear that you don't want to go back to right. where you were previously before. And rock bottom is a great place and people waste rock bottom. And I'm yeah. so glad that I hit rock bottom. <laughs> I actually like rock bottom. Uh, I like it because once you hit, there's only way one, one direction. And that's, that's right. That's and, right. If, and if you know how to utilize that, and if you've been before at the top or whatever version of what the top is, mm-hmm. right? Because there is no finished top. There, to me, it's, it's a forever moving up. Yep. So it's just different levels of the game. And there's different rock bottoms. And so. um, as an entrepreneur, especially a first-generation entrepreneur, you almost have to hit that rock bottom so you respect a penny. Woo. And if you don't respect a penny, then That's you're never right. going to earn a dollar. If you don't respect a dollar, you're never going to earn the $100. And if you don't respect $100, you're never going to respect the thousands and the millions and the tens of millions and the hundreds of millions. you got to respect it at every single level. And sometimes I'm so glad – that I was on food stamps because I respect that penny. Yes. That penny went a long way and that dollar went a long way and multiple dollars went a long way. So I know the power of that because otherwise if I wouldn't have, I probably would have spent all the money that came in and be like, I'm going to buy this and everything that I never had and then went broke and went Whew. completely dead on there. And yeah. something that, you know, as you were talking there is that I never want to go backwards and I keep something as a reminder in my wallet right behind my debit card mm-hmm. is my food stamp card Woo! to make sure like, hey, every time I grab my debit card, I say, hey, you can, you, I'm gonna pull out it's, my wallet it's not very, too, it's not very uh, far. I'm becoming more aware of the things and of the people that I want to be around mm-hmm. and that I allow to be around because before, uh, like you said earlier, chasing the business or chasing that, the, we, I'm not, we're not out to chase the business, we're, the, it's coming to us. Mm-hmm. The people are coming to us. The opportunities. You're here because what? Uh, again, we have a friendship. We have a there's there's commonality in our backgrounds, and we want to share it and hope that we inspire others. Inspire others right. that that if we can do it, they can do it as well. Mm-hmm. And even even bigger, the fact that we're Latinos. That's right, right? Yep. Latinos, and we can we can go and and inspire other Latinos that are always like, oh, they're not gonna pick me because of the color mm-hmm. of my skin or because. No, motherfucker, they're not going to pick you because the way you act. You yeah. got you to change your mind. thinking Your mindset. You got to you change your mindset. We got and, and I understand it now a lot. And again, I, I understand it a lot now more as I've gotten older because we've become wiser. We've gone through the, the tribulations, the trials and tribulations of life, and we're still will continue. But, man, it starts with... With us. With us. It starts with us. And we're the ones that have to be that change. It's an interesting story. Is like when we moved into the country club, we're doing a whole bunch of work on the house and everything. So we hired a lot of people to come in and paint, redo the carpet and everything. So before we moved in, they were all working on that. So my wife and I go like, oh, let's go check on the house to see how it's going. So we go and we open the door and then the guy goes, "Uh, oh, no, senor, no work today. No Uh work today. Like, you're not supposed to be working today. He thought we were one of the workers that were coming in. Because, like, oh, there's a Mexican couple that's coming in. Of course they don't live here in the country club in this big old house or anything like that. I said, oh, no, we own the house. Mm -hmm. He goes, oh, Mm -hmm. I didn't know that you guys own it. So, like, all of a sudden his mind shifted. And every time we see some DoorDash people that come in, they're Hispanic or they're Mexican, they're, like, they'll come and look. And then we answer the door. And they look at us like, 
Oh, then, then, yeah, then you got to hit him up in Spanish. See, si, see, si, right, huh? Si, right. Hablo español. ¿Qué pasó? A ver, dime. And that's <laughs> it. And, and we're put there to change environments. Yes. We're there to change environments. So it doesn't become so abnormal to have a Latino that comes into the country club or Latino that's sitting yeah. front row over the Golden State Warriors game or Latino yeah. to be the Golden State Warriors owner. I still owner. need to go like, with you to a game, man. I, I, and next time, let let's me know. Go. I want to be sitting on the front row, too. We do. We do. <laughs> I, I, I could. I just don't know who or what has those tickets because I don't know who has the access, but I would love to go well, to now you know. Games. Yeah. Now you now. know who. Now you know who. We're now going. You know who. I'm going. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it, no. it is crazy being in those environments. Like, yeah. literally, my wife and I were talking about this, and we made friends with everybody who's there, all the owners that are there, too. My wife is great at making friends yeah. somehow in some Social way. Social butterfly, man. She is definitely... And that's she, where the power partner comes in that's to right. give you the vision of like my life has expanded because of her, of like right. just the people she has attracted and the connections she's made with. Like we sit at the Warriors game, and we know all the owners are like, oh my gosh, Julie Rubin, yeah, good to see you guys again. I'm so glad you're here. And then we're thinking more and more, like we're the only ones on this row that are not billionaires yeah. yet. And we're thinking and expanding our mind, like this is cool, like running a business and everything like that. But you know where the real money is. Everybody's a VC here in this row That's that we're right. sitting on. That's where the real money is. That's playing at a different level and at a different game. That's right. So now my vision is a little bit different. The yeah. 10-year vision that we have and the five-year vision that we have, it's a little bit different than just running a business. Right. It's great and it's fun running a business. I'm the only person that's running it, the whole deal. We have great employees, 25 team members. But going back to what you said, you got to have a big vision for your life. And when you have a big vision for your life, you're going to be motivated every single day. But that yeah. big vision has to go beyond just your life. That's right. It has to be about other people. Yeah. So once it became from just me to now, I'll do more for others than I would do for myself. I yes. started thinking my team members. I started thinking about their families. And every yep. day I think about them and yep. I think about their families and how their families would be affected if I do one wrong thing or if I hang around the wrong person or if my character is tainted in any way somehow. So everything mm. I do seven mm. days a week is all affecting their families. So yes. when I think of it like that, I'm not going to be partying. I'm not going to be yeah. doing the stupid stuff. I'm yeah. not going to be over here hanging out outside of my Fuck, wife. That's or so anything much fun, like that. though, man. <laughs> and, and it's even more fun, though, yeah. hanging out with billionaires I, at Warriors I, games in the right. front row. That's right. And hanging out with huge pastors that are pastoring over 30,000 people in congregation and getting mentorship from them and hanging yeah. out over at various different events where we've met amazing people that are four generation billionaires that are there too. Wow. That stuff's fun. Wow. I'd rather do that. I've than met be... first generation billionaires. I haven't met fourth generation. That's, that's... yes. Yeah. It, it's stuff like that. Founder yeah. of the internet, meeting people like that. And the people that went from 1 million to $5 billion within a span of five years. Yeah. Like, and that's, that's all possible. I want to go into mm -hmm. that. I want to dive into that, that, that thought process because I've seen and, and tasted almost, right, when we, uh, Latin Life, I, I, it was J J January, February of 2020, my partner, Eric Osuna, I don't, did you ever meet yeah, my Yeah, I met Eric, yeah. Yeah. Yep. They were doing the, they filled, they did all the forms. We had uh, Dave Martinez, they had done all the forms to go public, and we were supposed to go public in June, July of 2020, and March, the company, wow. uh, well, the world shuts down. So there is no billion dollar dream because they were they were projecting that we would have scaled exponentially in the world, and maybe that was that would there was a reason for all that. Maybe we weren't. There always is. That we weren't ready for it. There always is. Maybe yeah. it would have destroyed you quite yeah. possibly too. Maybe yeah. it was too much all at one time. All at once. Or maybe you're built for something even bigger than just one billion dollars. Yeah, too. I, thank you, Amen. I love. Hey, I, I love that that thinking. Yes. And so going to your point. In the last three years, let's say, yeah, since COVID, right? And then the world started turning around. And then when I founded my, my next company, I then I fell under the mentorship of four great titans. Mm -hmm. And I'm following their path that you're right. I, I, exponential growth is there. It, all it takes is one deal. That's it. One deal in the world, in the universe that we're in. And you can go from 1 million, 2 million, 20 million, 100 million to a billion and then mm -hmm. from there if you get to those to those levels of life there is no limit if you mm -hmm. know if you've done it once and you have that roadmap and you and you haven't burned your uh, your relationships your you've taken care of who you who you are mm -hmm. as a person as a human as your your body too whoo yeah that's why I'm so I'm I, I I'm so thankful 
of the fact that I'm I've transformed myself not I've transformed myself but not by myself to who I'm I'm am and who I'm going to become. One of my goals and and, and the goal is on my birthday I turned forty eight this year is to really be so shredded to be at such a peak state body wise. And at the same time, as I've been doing that, and I know that you've probably experienced this, mm-hmm. is that as your body transforms, your mind oh, yeah. is on a whole different frequency. Oh, yeah. The outside is just a reflection of the inside. Woo! That's all it is. That's all it is. So That's a highlight there, by the way, producer. I like, I like, the, what is the, the outside is only a reflection? Of the inside. Of the inside. It really wow. is. So wow. when I see somebody that's sick all the time, I know there's thoughts that are going through their mind that's sick thoughts mm. that are like thinking of like, ah, oh, I'm always sick. Something always happens to me. Somebody who's always getting into accidents, something always bad's happening to them. Sure, there's a certain it. way that they're talking to themselves every single day because on the outside, it may seem like oh, they talk talk to you in a certain way but on the inside what they're speaking about it's reflecting on the outside because they're sick all the time something bad always happens or in some kind of challenge all the time because the way that they're speaking to themselves Oof. every single day so going back to mental toughness Oof. that's really where it comes in to be mentally tough to speak to yourself and speak life to yourself because i was actually telling my team this this morning that whatever you communicate hey man, man, i just with, felt it right now I was like <laughs> damn i'm like and i say that ruben oh my god mm-hmm. i felt it right now because I've been talking to myself. Crazy, mm-hmm. right? We're talking to ourselves. No, it's I I've, I've had to feed myself myself and I had to take myself back to a, a certain peak state. Um I I was at the Dallas event and I got to meet um uh, David Goggins and mm-hmm. uh, Mark Cuban. You got a billionaire and then you got a multi billionaire now because he sold the the team and it was already worth a billion something, but now it's worth three, four billion because, and the investments that he's made. And, and with David Goggins, when first, when he spoke and I, and I got to see him, I was like, dude, this guy was like right here. And I could just feel the dude's energy. Mm. And for him to share his body, how destroyed his body is, but yet he got up like a beast, that energy, man, that, Mm -hmm. that, uh, that is just unexplainable, man. It gives you no excuse. Because, yeah. It zero. gives you no excuse. So going back to it, it then reminded me of uh, like, oh, dude, like there's you, you, there is no excuse. You got to keep mm-hmm. going. You got to go. It, it, it's just like, so I started talking to myself. That's going mm-hmm. back to my point. Talking to myself and started refeeding myself because there was a voice a couple last week, two weeks ago. There's something that just creeped in. And there was a moment just maybe where I was in, I had a moment of myself, right? A pity moment or something that I might have done that I was disappointed in myself. And then all of a sudden that little voice creeped in and he starts talking in my head about the fucking enemy. The, yeah. And next thing I know, I'm like, no, no, mm-hmm. no, no. And then finally I was like, no, I'm done. Like you get, you're getting out of that fear. Yep. Is going to get out of my head because I am, I know who I am and I know where I've been and I know what I can do. Mm-hmm. I just have to, again, I have to eat my own words. I have to decide, commit, and execute. Re- co- re-decide, recommit, and re-execute so that I can move forward. That's because right. Because sometimes we get stuck and we get stuck in our head. That's right. And our head can become our worst worst enemy and all of us do because it's in those <laughs> silent moments when we're by ourselves and we're just with ourselves and yeah. our mind starts going crazy and it Ooh. starts going up like what makes me think that i'm going to be a multi-billionaire what makes yes. me think that i'm going to create something different too and that's when the enemy starts attacking it yes. and the more that you yes. communicate with the enemy the more that the negativity will continue to creep into your mind yeah but if you communicate with the positivity and communicate more in a positive direction then there's more positivity that comes into your mind it's yeah. easier said than done but you got to have triggers that snap you out of it to say, yeah. oh, I'm doing it again. Yeah. I'm going and listening to what the enemy's telling me in my mind. Yeah. I got to go back to my principles of like, That's who true. am I? I am I am strong. I'm yeah. great. I know who I am. I'm a child of God. I know that there's yeah. greater in life for me, that this is not the end, that this yeah. is just the beginning. Yeah. You start working yourself up That's to the right. end of like, screw that. Yeah. Why was I even you, thinking you, that you way? Quiet, oh, you quiet all that noise, that crazy noise. And it's crazy you say that because when I feel that I'm off center or at a line and I have to realign myself, I go back to, I have a routine every morning. Like literally, I I got a crazy routine. It actually. Yeah, like, and you like waking up earlier because you know that not many people are going to be waking up that early either. That's right. So you're doing what other people aren't going to do. And right. this is what I tell my friends all the time because yeah. they sometimes we'll go on trips and like, ah, oh, man, I feel like 
maybe we shouldn't be staying at this luxury hotel or we shouldn't be like celebrating and having these amazing dinners and everything yeah. too. I said, you know what? You got to give yourself credit because yes. you were willing to do what other people weren't willing to do, which means that you should have what other people will not have. That's right. Because most people are not willing to do the things that you've done. Most Woo. people are not willing to build a business and go on food yeah. stamps and move back in with their parents, move in with their sister and yeah. sleep in their car. Most yeah. people are not are not willing to do that because it's embarrassing. Yeah. It's even embarrassing to well, talk about. A, it, humiliation is that just rocket fuel for me. Absolutely. I just, I'm just like, I just think I'm like, no, I, I will not allow myself to be humiliated mm -hmm. i will not allow uh someone's opinion or mm -hmm. thought of me affect me you yeah. don't know you don't know where i come from you don't know what i've done exactly and, and you will not do the things that it takes to get to where i'm at now i don't know who the other person is and i don't know if hey you might be doing you might be on your own journey but god knows where i'm at and where i'm going and what i'm trying to do that's right and and knows that my heart of hearts is to make an impact and be an inspiration mm -hmm. to our community, to all communities, mm -hmm. right? I've, I've, I, I've been saying this a lot lately is that I want to make an impact on all people. Yep. I don't care what color, what, what gender, what you are, as long as you're human and you have a pulse and you're kind. Mm -hmm. And if you're an asshole or mean, I hope that I can affect you and instill some, some, some light into you. But even more to help elevate the Latino community. That's us, right. Because... That's right. That to me is important, and if we can help our community rise, then we'll have a, a, a better outlook. Cause look at where we're at, right? California. Mm -hmm. I mean, West Coast. Uh, there's more Latino population here than yep. any other population, and why not be the positive and the change instead of continuing the and perpetuating shit that just exactly that, that becomes toxicity to the mind, and exactly. to the body, yeah. and to the soul, and that's a whole other world, man. In in my journey, when I was stuck at like a million, two million dollars, I realized that you got to have a bigger why behind yeah. just you. Because in the beginning, it was just me trying to survive. I wanted to move out of my parents' house and move my yeah. son into a decent place. Like it was just for me. Yeah. But then once it turned from just me to we and to Ooh. everybody else, us, and now it's bigger team, and now it's us, everything, yes. team and we. Yes. And so I say we a lot because yeah. we're doing it for us it's right. not just me anymore once it started becoming about everybody else instead of just me all of a sudden i started seeing the business take off and yeah. now contributing to my community and continue to give to the community i don't say give back because that means that i've taken something away Ooh. so in reality Ooh. it's giving to the community i like that and every time i give to the community i, like that. I yeah. get 10 times more give in back return. i think that it's, it's, it's used out of context right mm -hmm. you're giving back you're like whoa you that never... means you took something wow wow whoa, what, what did you take then but yeah. the reality is I'm just giving. I'm just giving. I'm just wow. giving wow. for it. I've and learned something new today. Ruben, thank you, brother. <laughs> no, I that that is insurmountably amazing to just what I just learned right now, because it's true. We words are powerful. Mm-hmm. They are. Words are powerful. Every single piece, even when you say it jokingly, it's powerful over your life. You speak positivity over your life, you're going to get more positivity. Yeah. You speak negativity, even if it's joking, you get negative in your life there. And it's the power of our words. And in, in the Bible, it says the power of life and death is in the tongue. What it talks about is that like our words are powerful and the things that we say are powerful, not only to the other person, but also to ourselves. So everything that we say is all coming back to us like a boomerang effect. So you might as well say the good stuff too. Is Mauricio, you're going to be a multi-billionaire because right. if you're a multi-billionaire, then yes. I'm a multi-billionaire too. You are too. too. You're going to be a billionaire too, bro. Multi-billionaire. We're, 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 we're going to be part of the billionaires club, right. bro. <laughs> and, that, and, and what's interesting is like the higher that we climb, yes. the more critics start to creep in. Yes. But critics, well, and people will never criticize you if you're doing if they're doing more than you. Right. So you'll never be criticized by somebody who's doing more than you, only yeah. someone that's doing less, less than, than you. you. Yes. And it's always yes. happens like that. You always got the people who are going to criticize you. I'm like, oh, you've changed, Mauricio. You're not the same person yeah. that you were five years ago. You're right. Of I course have. I changed. Yes. It's just you that didn't change. <laughs> that's the challenge is that you didn't change. So yes. I'm so grateful. Yes. The circle becomes smaller and smaller of my associations because yes. We're always trying to grow together. And yeah. some people, they don't make it because they are okay with just managing what they got. Like, hey, they're good. Yeah, But absolutely. unfortunately, the kingdom's not finished yet. So I'm out there to build a kingdom of making sure that we prosper and all of us prosper together and changing our environments to make sure, hey, 
there's a Latino that's going to be owning the Golden State Warriors. That's it's not right. just going to be that group. There's yeah. somebody who's going to be doing and changing environments every time that we walk into a room. And that's our whole entire goal and our whole entire yeah. mission is make sure that we change the way that people look at Latinos in the future and yeah. now. And it's up to us to do that every single day. Yeah. So my mission is just to inspire others to elevate their lives because I can't just do it by myself. Yeah. We've got to have a team of people and everybody. Yeah. What does team stand for? Together, everyone achieves more. Woo. And that's the whole entire goal. Yeah. There's only so much you could do by yourself. Amen. I but agree. you got to have a whole entire team that does it together. Yeah. And everybody's got gifts that yeah. can play off of each other. And that's the best thing is that I don't know it all. But yet I have a team that does know it all yeah. over there on that side. And we've got team members that have specific gifts and unique gifts because we have a unique thumbprint on every single one of us. So as long as we operate in our gifts and we speak those gifts over each person that we come into, mm -hmm. this world would be a much better place, a yeah. much better place. I, I'm in agreement with you. You, you, we, We've been talking and I've, there's a lot of, there's certain things that I've been catching in our conversation. And it seems that faith is mm -hmm. a big, a big play in your, in, in the way you communicate and, I, it, I'm, I'm going to even say that in your decision-making process, mm -hmm. faith is a big thing. Now, faith is a very big thing for me, and I've, I feel that I've, as, as I've gotten wiser, right, and with the experiences that I've had, that my faith has only become stronger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What I've learned over time is that if you don't stand for something, then you'll fall for anything. Oof. So what does the Resendis family stand for? The Resendis family's core values are the five Fs, faith, family, finances, fitness, and fun. And we practice those every single day in that order. So first thing that I do when I wake up after using the restroom, of course, is pray to God and saying like, hey, thank you. Thank you for allowing me another day. Thank you for the family that I have. Thank you for the house I get to live in. And once we start living with gratitude and live in so much thankfulness yes. that like, thank you for the smallest of things, yeah. there's so much power that comes with that, that like all those challenges that we think of that are so complex and we, we let the enemy start to mess with our mind about, they all go away because we live in gratitude and we yes. live in that thankfulness. So I've seen so much Mauricio that I cannot deny that God is real and that <laughs> yeah. faith is a powerful concept and a powerful skill and a powerful tool that if everybody utilized their faith in that huge way, they would be living in a kingdom mindset. They would yeah. be living in a huge kingdom because Heaven should be lived here on earth. Heaven isn't a place that you go to. Right. It's here on earth. Wow. And you could live in it and everybody could live in it. But the challenge is most people don't have that faith to actually say, what is faith? Knowing that the next step is going to show up even when you don't even know if the yep. next step is going to show up or not. But you got that faith that it is going to show up. And especially being an entrepreneur, yeah. you don't know what happens tomorrow. No. You don't know what's going to happen, <laughs> but you got to have that faith that tomorrow is going to be even better than right. it was today. Oh, and when you man. have that faith, guess what? You just turn my stomach. Yeah, because Tomorrow it's true. will it's true. be better That's than it right. was yeah. yesterday. So I feel like entrepreneurship is one of the greatest personal development programs that anybody can get involved with because yeah. you got to have a pretty darn strong faith to be faithful and know that the next step is going to show up even when you don't even know how it's going to show up. But eventually it shows up. You've seen it happen in your life time after time yeah. after time you, after time again. Yeah, I want to say thank you. Thank you for taking the time out of your schedule and sharing with us, with the world, right? I mean, we don't, we, we're, we know that we're going to have an effect on somebody. Somewhere mm, in this, this right. listening is going to be impacted by what we've shared. And I think that our intent is to continue to make an impact so that whomever this makes an impact, that they also can, can something turns on in them and that they can then go repeat it and give it to someone else because, mm -hmm. yeah, we're, we're on a crazy time and we're only here once. That's right. And, and once is good enough. And once is good enough, As long as you yes. do it right. As long <laughs> yeah. as you do it right, once is good enough right there. And, and I would say to that person who's yeah. maybe at rock bottom currently right now, yeah. that is currently at rock bottom that's listening to you and I, you and I have both been at rock bottom. Yes. That rock bottom, don't waste it because it's a great place to learn from. Yeah. And over the next 12 months, your life will be 100% different than it is today in a yes. greater way as long as you stay faithful. You yeah. stay continued that you were put here on earth for a reason, right. that you have a destiny that's greater and a purpose yeah. to do something great with your life. And that's the reason why you're listening to Mauricio and I because yes. You have found us for a reason That's at right. a, the time and the place that you're at right now. So that way we could tell you that 
if we can do something with our life, yeah, you can do something with your life too. So yeah. I think that's the biggest thing that I would love to get out of today. Yeah, no, and thank you. And, and, and you're right. I think two very strong personalities, strong people in business, you, how bad that's you right. want it. And then is it, are you willing to do the work that it takes? Mm-hmm. There's people that want to be an entrepreneur, the want to preneurs, want to want entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. And then there's the entrepreneurs that actually really take action and really make things happen. That's right. So, and 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 again, uh, we're both results of that. We we really we saw life. We grabbed life by the horns. We've taken the opportunities that we have been given, mm-hmm. and you built a amazing empire, and you're continuing to build. And I definitely look forward to seeing you in the Billionaires Club. That's right. And it's right around the corner for all of us. All That's it takes right. is one deal. There's only one Silicon Valley mm-hmm. in the entire planet, and that's here in San Jose. Uh, in the Bay Area, and we are the global tech capital of the world. And surrounded by amazing people yeah. that are like continuing every day to change the world in yeah. artificial intelligence yeah. and technology and everything that we do on earth. Facebook was made here, PayPal, like all these various different companies. Google, and- Microsoft, Apple, I mean, you, you don't realize what you have until you travel to a different place. We were in Greenville, South Carolina a couple of weeks ago. We are like, okay, what's the major like companies here? You probably have Google here or something too. We we're like, oh, we got Michelin here. We're like, oh, wow. Yeah. Like, dang, over here in Silicon <laughs> Valley. Like, I guess we do have some stuff. But like being born and raised in San Jose, yeah. like sometimes you just are, you, you don't you're know. just around it all the time and you get used to it from there. So it's like, yeah. Thing, so. And, and I think it comes down to just like anything, just like relationships. As long as you cho- change or treat the relationship like it's new and yeah. it's always going to be fresh and it's always going to be new here in the Bay area and Silicon Valley. I always see something new. Every yeah. time I go to San Francisco, yeah. I get lost and I'm like, I didn't even know this place even existed. Yeah. This little corner, this little piece of the city or anything like that. Even still here in San Jose, there's restaurants that have been here for years that I still haven't even been to yet. So there's always new to discover. So as long as we treat a relationship as it's new, yeah. that relationship is always going to be exciting all the time. And that's the yeah. relationship I have with Silicon Valley. Nice. I'm, I'm just as in love with Silicon Valley and uh, San Jose's home for me. And I'm continue, I, I want to continue to build everything that I'm doing here, build it here, brand it here, and just know that we're making an impact globally. Mm-hmm. And it all, it's all starting from even in this little room that we're in. That's right. Today, and we're going to remember today, too, yes! on this date that we're speaking about. Good thing that it's on camera and on voice here. I love it. Thank you so much again, Ruben. I appreciate the fact that, again, you came out, you made time, took away time from your family and your home and your business to be here. And I'm, I'm excited to see the, the our lives continue to progress mm-hmm. and to do the things that we're doing. And again, thank you so much, man. Last words, man. What, what, what would be something that you would want to share with the world out there? Anything. I mean, what, what, whatever's important to you, what would you want to share with the people out there? Yeah, I think the biggest thing to share is have a big why and have a reason why. It's great to be wealthy. It's great to make a whole bunch of money and grow businesses and everything, too. But you have, a, have to have a greater why. And you have to have a greater why that will make you cry because all of that stuff is stuff. But guess what? We don't leave this earth with any of that stuff. So you got to think about the legacy that you're going to leave behind. And that's the legacy that you leave on this whole entire earth that will last generations upon generations upon generations. So every day that we operate, we got to think about how are we operating and are we operating with character? Are we operating with our core values? So I would leave behind the person that's that's listening right now to say, don't give up. Continue to do what you're doing. Continue to have that dream. There's a reason why that dream is in your mind and you've had those visions and you have spoken it out. Don't be scared to speak it out because, yes, you're going to look a little stupid for a little while as you speak it out, just like how I looked stupid when I was in my parents' house and on food stamps saying, I live in a downtown high rise overlooking the entire city. Of course, everybody's going to say, why do you think you're going to live in it? You're living in your parents' house on food stamps. Be willing to look stupid for a temporary period of time That's right. until it becomes a reality because we need you on this earth. We need you to make an impact on this world. We, Mauricio and I can't do it to, just by ourselves. Right. We need you to that's help right. us do it. That's so right. That's well, what I leave it with. Uh, hey, I'm in agreement with you 100% on all, everything you just shared. And mm-hmm. I just, again, I'm, I'm very grateful, thankful, appreciative, everything, all of the above that you were able to make the time be here. 
Uh, by the way, this is the second time you've been on on my show. You oh, were on right. my season two of Mauricio Mejia Live, and when we were doing it during the f- pandemic, during pandemic, that's and, right. and we did it live. Yeah, and it's actually it's still living, but it was a different time. We didn't get to enjoy the what we have today. I think tonight, today, we've got to share a special special moment. It's a different magic, man. One hundred percent. It's crazy to think about that time too, because it was during the <laughs> pandemic, and you're like, hey, so how's business going? You're like, we're, we're in yeah. the thick of it too. Yeah, we, and, we, I, we, and I was like, dude, we're growing sixty percent year over year. Like. You're the first person I've talked to over this past month that says like your business is yeah. growing. Like everybody else's business is like dying. Yeah, I remember you, you when you said that. I was like, oh man, <laughs> thank you. And yeah. like I'm so proud of everything you. you've accomplished and the thank perseverance you. you've displayed and what you've done here. This is just the very beginning for you. So yes. like I'm just appreciative to be part of the journey a little well, bit. You you are part of the journey, and we're gonna share more journeys together and more more wins. That's together. right. So anyhow, I want to thank you again. I want to thank everyone that's watching Mauricio Mejia Live, season three with my special guest, friend, entrepreneur, Latino. Just we're causing some havoc. Ruben Resendez. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Mauricio Mejia Live. Live.